So I'm excited to take a few moments and show you some of the capabilities we've added for ClickView on the iPad. So here you have the access point. Uh, what's nice about ClickView on the iPad with the access point is all of the built-in security that you get natively with ClickView. So authentication and login. And here I see all of the ClickViews that are available to me. Let me go ahead and launch this one. We focused a lot in this release of bringing all of the great layout capabilities to ClickView on the iPad. So we have all of our list boxes, chart types, dials, uh, tables, but all together on the screen. So you really get context for what's happening as you make selections. We've also added this great uh, the tab row, made it bigger, easier to hit. The toolbar at the top is also bigger, easier to hit with your fingers. One of the challenges with an HTML5 application like this, of course, is running in Safari, we get Safari's uh, toolbar at the top. We can eliminate that by adding a bookmark to the home screen. And when we do that, we can launch back into the application, but we'll remove uh, the Safari Chrome at the top, and we give people a way to have it on their home screen with fast access. Let me go ahead and log in. Another area we've really focused in this release is on creating a good interaction model for ClickView on the iPad. So, for instance, being able to scroll list boxes simply by swiping your finger up and down and dragging it. Nice things like bounce at the end, so you know you've hit the end or the beginning of that list box. That same scrolling model works on things like tables. So you can go ahead and scroll the table, look at all the data you need to see. Um, if you want to go ahead and make a selection, it's as simple as touching. So if I want to look at bikes, I go ahead and select bikes, and click view updates in the context of that selection. Um, we also support a multi-select model. So if I want to go ahead and select uh, a couple of these subcategories, I can click and hold and I bring up the multi-select uh, menu right here, select the items I'm interested in, then I can get go ahead and cancel, clear, or commit the selection I just made, which I'll do. That same model of touch and hold to bring up multi-select works in charts. So if I touch and hold in the chart, I bring up an ellipse for making the selection. Maybe I want to look at these negative margin months. Go ahead and make that selection, and I've uh, selected only the months that I wanted to see. And again, the touch and hold model works in tables. So if I'm taking this table and I want to look at a particular set of these, I can go ahead and touch and hold, bring up the Barker, uh, maybe select just those right there, and commit the selection. Also, a lot of the functionality people love in ClickView, like the global search, work great on the iPad. So if I want to find red products, I can go ahead and do that. And I can see, oh, here are the color red, and now I've selected only the red products uh, very quickly and easily. Sometimes they're more sophisticated selections you want to do. So for instance, in this list box, perhaps I want to go ahead and select just the, the uh, possible items. I can do that quickly. So we've added things like this drop-down menu, which traditionally would have been accessed through a right click, but now you can access them from a drop-down, which is uh, easy to do on a touch interface. So maybe I want to do, for instance, select excluded and invert that selection. Also things like um, bookmarks. So I've stored a bookmark for German accessories, and I can go ahead and quickly bring that up. Or maybe I want to have a bookmark for French bikes. I can go ahead and quickly add that. And now, if I ever need to go back to French bikes, I can quickly bring it back, French bikes.